All right. Well, the only thing I can think of is that um, Aussie must not have figured out yet that we're poor. <laughs> She must think we still have a lot of money or something, and she's like, hey, if I stick with him through this really hard time, I'm golden. That's the only thing I can think of. Aussie caught me as I was walking through the hall. Hey, Flynn! Hi. You'd better be happy to see me. I just did you a big favor. You did? You need money, right? Now that you've lost your job? Yeah. My parents had agreed to send me some funds, but I was still open to other suggestions. I talked to Francesca at the hotel. Since we're coming into summer season and there's more work to go around, she is willing to hire you on as casual labor for at least a few hours a week. I told her you were a great guy. Aussie, that's wonderful. I know. You can make it up to me later. After all, you need a source of income if you're going to keep taking me on dates. <laughs> well, it was still thoughtful of her, even if it did serve her interests. She got you a job, too. Huh. I'm trying to understand. Brendan, help me understand. <laughs> Aussie. Don't make me question everything I know. Aussie parked by my room that night. She didn't say anything, she just pressed against me. I understood what she wanted, and in no time our clothes were off and we were getting into bed. It did make me wonder a bit. Was this all there was to our relationship? But then, who was I to complain? Indeed. I'm still, I'm still perplexed. What is our relationship? Hey, Flynn. Aussie cozied up to me in the hall outside my room. I haven't seen enough of you lately. Aren't you going to take me out? Sorry. I've been kind of stressed with everything happening and studying for exams and I'm a little strapped for cash. She stomped her foot and frowned at me. I got you a job! What was the point of that if we never go out? Don't you care about me anymore? Or am I boring now that you've nailed me? No! Of course not! I'm sorry. I promise, we'll go out again soon. I'll save up a bit and make it something special. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Is it... The something special that's not special enough? Because otherwise, I don't know. I really should have just turned on the lights. Why did I splash Danny? Can I go back? No. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. I didn't mean to splash you. I was just got. I'm so. <laughs> I'm so flummoxed. I don't know what to do. I stood waiting outside the hostel for Aussie, ready for our big dinner date. Things had been a little rough lately, but we had been going out for about two and a half months now, and I figured it was a good idea to celebrate it. I was taking her to an expensive seafood restaurant. I had even borrowed a tie from Mark, though I had no idea why he owned so many silk ties since he never seemed to wear them. I really did wonder about him sometimes. I really must date him next time. Especially when I had nothing to do but wait and wonder. It was already 15 minutes past the time when Aussie was supposed to meet me. I wasn't sure she was going to show up. I wasn't sure I wanted her to. Our relationship had been exciting in the beginning, but it had turned into such a struggle. Aussie could be so demanding. It felt like a full-time job just trying to keep her happy. Even the good parts seemed like they weren't as good as they should be. The sex was fun, the outings could be exciting, but I felt like we never really talked to each other. She said she trusted me completely, and she never held the whole theft incident against me, but for all that, I always felt like she was keeping secrets. I didn't even know where she was most of the time. With Brandon, probably. Despite everything, though, I did care about her. 
You're supposed to work at maintaining your relationship when you love someone, right? That's the right thing to do. I knew she was having a hard time. She didn't fit in at the hostel. She had a lot of baggage from her ex-boyfriend. She didn't seem to get on well with her parents, either. And for all that she acted tough, she was younger than me. I had to give her time. We could find our way to being happy together somehow. I sincerely believed that. At least, that's what I told myself as I checked my phone again. 20 minutes. Ready to go? Aussie popped up in front of me, a cloud of perfume surrounding her. Nice tie, Flynn. Uh, yeah. Where were you? She glared at me. I had things to do. What are you, the police? Do you need me to report my every move now? No! Don't be ridiculous. I was just wondering. I was waiting for you, you know. Hmm, cheers. Anyways, how far is it? I don't want to walk too far. These heels are already pinching at my feet. It's not that far. Maybe a 20 minute walk total plus the tube. She looked like I slapped her in the face. Flynn! I don't want to pay for a taxi. What a cheapskate! Isn't this supposed to be our special anniversary dinner? Cheapskate? I was about to fork over a hundred pounds for dinner and she was calling me a cheapskate? Fine! Whatever! I'll get a cab. Come on, no more complaining after this. She rolled her eyes and followed behind me as we wove our way to the main street and I hailed a cab. The ride to the restaurant was made in silence, something that by now felt familiar to me. Back in the day, I would have started to worry that I was being boring and tried to make conversation. I didn't feel the need anymore. I couldn't tell whether I had gotten more confident or just stopped caring. Finally, we pulled up to the front of the restaurant. I paid the driver, who was staring approvingly at Aussie's legs, and grabbed the door for her. After you. Um... To my surprise, Aussie seemed uncomfortable. She was tapping her hands together quickly, staring at the restaurant with something close to fear. I'd rather not eat here. Why? Is there something wrong with it? No, but... It's not a good idea. There are better places. I can show you. Let me... I made reservations here a week ago. Got us the best seat and everything. Can't you be happy with that? I'm trying so hard to make this a nice night for us. She glared at me. Like I'm not? I rolled my head back to stare at the slowly darkening sky. Are you going in or not? Fine. If that's what you want, then that's what you'll get. She marched through the door. I could nearly taste her wounded pride as she passed. Alright, so what's your aversion to this restaurant? The waiter took us to a table a few floors up, right next to some large windows. From there we could look over the city of London by evening. Oh, you can see Big Ben. Aussie was looking around, but not at the view. She was glancing around the room as if searching for something. Did you drop something? No, everything's fine. Still, she seemed nervous. When the waiter came to take our drink orders, his eyebrows shot up for a moment at the sight of us, and I began to worry if I needed a suit to be in here. Then he smiled a peculiar smile, or perhaps a normal smile for those in the service industry. His eyes did not turn up at the corners. I'll be right back with your drinks. He disappeared around the corner. I tried to start up small talk with Aussie, but she was clacking her, newly manicured, fingers on the tabletop, scanning the room aimlessly. Okay, you have to tell me what's going on. You've been acting weird ever since we got here. What is it about this place that bothers you so much? I... There's some bad memories. <laughs> you! A man... Uh, I mean... A man in a goofy-looking chef's hat shouted from across the room. 
He was pointing at someone at the table near us, almost spitting with fury. I told you never to come back, and you come back the very next week! Whoa, sounds like somebody's in for it. The man crossed the room, but he didn't go to the table next to ours. He stopped square in front of Aussie. You break my heart in my own restaurant, but that's not good enough for you? You make me pay for your meal on top of it, and then... And then... You come back the very next week with another meal ticket, eh? He jerked his head towards me. Pardon, but I think you have the wrong person. This is my girlfriend. Oh, I know. She was my girlfriend too up until last week. And a bunch of other people's girlfriend at that. I'm sorry? I don't think I understand what you're... She's cheating on you, mate. Running all over town with a bunch of rich men trying to find herself a sugar daddy. Aren't you? Aussie glanced nervously at me. I... I honestly don't know what to make of this route anymore. I mean... I think this is the time we need to... Uh... Whoops. I feel like now's the... Th I don't think there's a good end with Aussie. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Like, you have to... If you just keep going down this route... She's just gonna dump your butt. And then you're gonna be heartbroken. I just... Uh, I mean, she's been terrible. Mm, I'm gonna accuse. I looked at Aussie as I've seen her for the first time. Is this true? There we go. There it is! It's about time you figured it out. My jaw dropped. She wasn't horrified. She wasn't ashamed. She wasn't even surprised. No, she was smug. Well, looks like I've had all the fun I can with you for now. If you don't mind, I'll grab a ride home. She reached into the pocket of my jacket, took out my wallet, and took 20 pounds from it. Thanks for the laughs, Flynn! And she traves out of the room as bold as she came. Man, that's rough, buddy. Someone clapped me on the shoulder. Listen, I'll give you a meal on the house. Don't feel bad about yourself. This kind of thing could happen to anybody. It happened to me, after all. The chef went back to the kitchen, and after a time, the patrons went back to their meals, casting only the occasional curious glance my way. The meal tasted like cardboard. If it was good, I couldn't tell. I shoveled it down because I knew how much it cost, more than anything. I, out I ate out of spite. I wouldn't let her take my meal, too. Just my heart. Of course, Aussie wouldn't truly fall for someone like me. She was attractive and popular, and used to having her pick, and I was... what? Nobody, really. I was nothing to her. I was nothing to anyone. Oof. I'm sorry, Flynn. The next day, my brain felt like oatmeal. It was all I could do to sit on the sofa and stare at the television. I couldn't think. I didn't want to think. What an idiot I'd been. In the afternoon, I saw Aussie walk by the living room. She kept on walking, up to the stairs to her room, not even acknowledging me. I supposed I would have to get used to it. We still lived in the same building, after all. The only difference was that now I couldn't wait to go home. <whistles> I heard a low whistle and turned my head to see Angelo standing nearby. Bad luck there, yes. Yeah. Women, right? What? No. That one, Aussie, she is not a good woman. Not a normal woman. She is selfish, lazy, she makes work for others and does not care. 
She is all temper, but no conviction. She thinks only of herself. I remembered then that Angelo worked at the same hotel with Ossie. Had she come on to him too? I never thought about that before. Huh. Good point, Flynn. There is no excuse just because she is a woman. When a man treats a lady well, she wants to treat him well. He supports her, she supports him. It cannot be all one way. Louder for the people in the back, Angie. You and I, we are not brothers. But as a man, I tell you, forget that one and find a better woman. Aww. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I mean, not bro. I didn't even answer him. What was there to say? Stupid. I'd been stupid. That was all there was to it. Man, those Angie feels. Alright, uh, apparently I can't skip here. The final grades wouldn't be recorded for weeks. Why should the instructors bother pushing themselves to get it done quickly, after all? Those grades weren't their futures. After everything that happened, I had barely managed to get my head together in time for my last test. But I had pushed through, and I ought to get a decent score out of it. Surely I deserve that much. <laughs> Poor Flynn. Despite everything, it was a beautiful country. If only the people in it could live up to that. Ooh. Man. So angry at everybody in England. Flynn, no. And could this be my savior? <laughs> Sliding into the DMs. All right, Brendan, help me out, man. All right, here we go, everybody. <laughs> Let's see if this works. All right, what did you do? Say <laughs> oh, right, I guess that doesn't apply anymore. Virgin. I wasn't, actually, but when it came to this, I might as well have been. And there's that great picture again. Uh, alright, so we're missing everybody. Peggy's effervescent energy, Danny's guidance, Jihyo's artwork, even Aussie and all that she'd done to me, even James. Alright, uh, I mean, you've had one weird relationship, what's another one? I made a lot of friends, winku winku. <laughs> Alright, leave him alone. Does Asi have anything to say to me? She does. Hey! Clomping in on inappro inappropriately high heels, who dressed like that first thing in the morning, came the last person I would have expected to want to see me off. Sneaking off, huh? Slinking out the door in shame. Uh, not really. She glared. Look, it's not like I did anything wrong. Did you ever stop to think about that? I gave you affection and the feeling of power. I fed your ego and you gave me what I wanted in return. Isn't that what relationships are? Aussie. Seriously, get over it. I already have. What? Did you really not know? I moved on. You've been replaced. <laughs> with the guy that you also sleep with in this hospital. <laughs> That's the face you like to see. I wasn't about to tell her who had taken her place in my bed. That was none of her business. What made her think she had the right to come after me like this anyway? But, whatever you have to say, I don't care. I'm leaving. I turned my back on her and walked away. Woo! Go, Flynn! <laughs> oh. Alright. Oh yeah, so uh, 
Jinsu, here's what happened. So, is there a special someone that you're going to see again? Things got a little complicated. It's hard to explain. My so-called girlfriend betrayed me, and then my worst enemy turned into my... friends with benefits or something? Complicated barely seemed to cover it. When I found out how much Ozzy had lied to me, I thought I might never trust anyone again. With a little bit of distance, though, it didn't hurt so much anymore. I still didn't really understand people, and I needed to work on that. But I wasn't going to let one bad experience ruin my life. Yeah, we had a time, Jinsu. We had a time. Alright, and let's see what we got with that. Romance Aussie. Neutral! Heck yeah, alright. I knew you didn't have a good ending. I was almost- I almost got fooled. I almost offended you, because I'm like... What? Is that? Ah! I don't even know anymore. Alright, I had your number, girl. It all worked out in the end. Hooray! <laughs> we just had to find out that guys are better than girls. <laughs> I think that's what we learned, right? Jinsu was right all along. Alright, but we did that. Um, so yeah. Thank you guys for joining me for Aussie's Root. Unfortunately, she uh, didn't improve. But it was interesting. She was definitely a much better player than Brendan was, so I'll give her that at least, for what it's worth. Um, and now that we got her neutral ending, we'll try and get her bad ending, which should not be too hard. I might also try a couple of the other options that I didn't, just to see what would have happened if I did. But yeah, we're gonna try and get that bad ending anyway, so hopefully I'll see you over there, guys. Thanks again for joining me, and until next time, I will see you later.